Hi, second grade. Welcome back. Today, we are going to be starting unit number seven in our mathematical learning. Now, in the math expressions program, unit seven is the last and final unit in our second grade math. Now, this unit is going to focus on something different. This unit, we will learn about arrays and fractions. I'm very excited to start this unit with you. Today, we're going to focus on lesson number one, which is all about arrays. Now, you might say, what in the world is an array? Well, as you can see on my screen, I have posted a picture of an array. Do you notice anything about that picture of the kites? You might notice that the top and the bottom row of kites are the same. On the top, there are five kites, and on the bottom, there are five kites. You might notice that the kites are perfectly lined up with each other. They're very organized and very neat. Those things would be correct. An array is an organized drawing or representation of something. Now, arrays have two very important things. Arrays have rows. Rows are items that go across. This array has one, two rows. They go from side to side. Now, along with rows, they also have these items that go up and down. Those have a different name. Do you know what those are called, second grade? Those are called columns. Columns go up and down. Let's count how many columns we have. One, two, three, four, five. So we have two rows, one, two, and five columns. One, two, three, four, five. Now, sometimes you might see an array when you're working with multiplication. This unit is going to help prepare us for next year in third grade when we start learning about multiplication. Now, you might have already practiced that, and that is great, but arrays will help us get ready for that. Here in second grade, we're going to be using arrays to help us with repeated addition. Let's look at our first example. In our first example, of this repeated addition, we are going to practice this equation. Two plus two plus two. Now, as you can see, I do not have an array in front of me yet. If you look over on the side, you will see that I have orange squares and purple squares. We're going to use these today to help us make the equation two plus two plus two. Now, when I make this, I'm going to make some of my squares orange and some of them purple. Let's make our first two. Now two, as you know, is an even number. So I'm going to take one orange and one purple, and that's going to represent my first two. So we have two, let's make our second two. I'm gonna move them a little closer than the numbers are, but that is that middle two. I'm trying to make them as nice and even as possible. And now we have our last two. One, two. So this array represents my equation. I have two plus two plus two. Second grade, can you help me out? What is two plus two plus two? Six. You are right. This is six. Now, did you notice that my top blocks were orange and my bottom blocks were purple? We can say that the top half is orange and the bottom half is purple because my blocks are split perfectly in the middle. Half on the top are orange half on the bottom are purple. 
For our next equation, we're just going to use orange blocks. So this equation is 4 plus 4 plus 4. Now, there's two ways that we can do this. We can make our rows have 4 plus 4 plus 4, or we can have our columns each have 4. 4 plus 4 plus 4. I think for this one, I'm going to choose the rows since in the last problem, we did the columns. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. So my first row will have four orange blocks. See how I'm putting them all in a nice neat row. Then I have my second group of four blocks. And last is my third group of four blocks. Now I'm trying to make them as even as possible. Sometimes it's a little hard depending on if you have blocks or not. Now, second grade, help me out. I have four plus four. That's eight. Good. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So four plus four plus four gives me 12. If you have any blocks or any paper that you could make these blocks at home, this would be something good to be able to practice at home if you are interested. Now, you might see a problem like this in your work today. This problem already gives us an array, which makes it nice and easy for us. Now, you'll see that there are lines drawn. Some of the lines are on the side and some of the lines are on the bottom. Now these lines are there for a reason. The lines on the side are there so we can add each row of the picture. In this picture, they are circles, but they might be something different on another problem. So on the first line, I'm going to add one, two, three. And then I'm going to keep going. And they should all have the same number if it is an array. Okay, now on the bottom, we're going to count in the column. One, two, three, four. So this one is different than the rows. Don't just write three because the other ones were three. This one has four and this one has four. Now in some of our problems, it might have lines at the bottom. Those lines are for us to write two different addition equations. When I add up this array, I can add all of the rows or all of the columns. Watch me make my two equations. Three plus three plus three plus three equals, hmm, how many dots are there? There's 12 dots there. Or I could use the fours. Four plus four plus four. Oh, that was just the array we just did. But we still get 12. No matter which equation we use, we should get the same answer since there's only 12 circles on our problem. Let's try this one here with the triangles. First, let's count the rows. One, two, and then all of these have two. Okay, that one's good. Let's make our equation. I have one, two, three, four, five twos. Two plus two is two plus two plus two. All right, let's count those up. Ready? Two, four, six, eight, ten. That means that whatever we get for the columns should also equal ten. Let's count down. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that means this one must have five. That's a double second grade. Five plus five equals 10. Great job. Now, another item that you might need to do in this activity is we will need to do some measuring. Now, as you can see here, I've put a ruler on our page and there is a square. Now, we want to make nice, equal, and even lines. So, I'm going to be making lines using my centimeters. 
So I'm going to drag my shape over to the very start of the centimeters because as we learned when we learned about measurement this year, our item needs to line up right at the beginning. Now I'm going to use these centimeters to help me try to make as equal spaces as possible. Now it might be kind of tricky, but we're going to try our best. So watch how I do this. With my pencil, I am going to make a little tick mark at every whole centimeter. I don't need to make one at zero or at three because that's the, the front and the back lines. But I am going to make one right at the one centimeter and at the two centimeter. Now watch what I'm going to do once I have those lines. I'm going to do my very best to draw a straight line up to make my columns. Now if you have a real ruler on your paper, you can practice making a nice straight line. Since I'm doing this on the computer, it's actually very tricky for me to make that straight line. But I tried my best, they look pretty good. Now I have my columns and you may be asking, well, how do I make rows if I make columns? Should I just guess? And no, we're not going to guess. So after we use our ruler on the top or the bottom to draw our columns, now we need to turn our ruler so that now we can take our item and measure on the side. Now all you need to do is spin your ruler and line it up with the zero again. Now this time your ruler will be measuring the opposite direction. Now when I line my shape up, you'll see that going the other way, my shape is only two centimeters. So once again, I could put a little tick mark at zero and two if I want, but the major one is in the middle at one centimeter. There we go. Now my shape is complete. Now I can draw an addition equation. I could do two plus two plus two if I'm looking up and down, or if I'm going side to side, I could do three plus three. And they both should equal the same thing. How many squares do you see second grade? Six, they both have six squares. Let's try another one with a larger square or rectangle. Now, just like before, I'm going to start with the columns. Let's line up our square. Oh, this one is five centimeters, so we will need more lines for five centimeters. Let's see, there's zero and five. Let's do the middle ones. One centimeter, two, three, four. Now using my best steady hand, I'm gonna try to make some lines going up. Oh, that three wasn't very good, was it? We'll try that one one more time. It's very hard to do on a computer second grade, so I'm trying my best here. But now I have my columns. Let's go on to the rows. Here we go, second grade. I've turned my ruler and I've lined my shape up right at the zero centimeter mark. Now for every centimeter, I'm going to do my best to try to draw a nice straight line. And there's one there at four, but since there's already a line there. Let's go ahead and make some equations. How many are in each row? One, two, three, four, five. So we have five plus five plus five plus five. How many does that equal? Let's see, five, 10, 15, 20. And then we have four plus four, four plus four plus four. And that also gives us 20. For our last activity today, we're going to practice cutting an array into certain pieces. The first piece is cutting our array in halves. That means two equal pieces. I can cut this array right down the middle to make two pieces. If you have crayons at home, you can color your two pieces different colors. We also need to cut in thirds. Now I'm going to cut in thirds going from side to side since there are three rows. 
And last is fourths. I'm going to go up and down with the columns to cut in fourths.